Sergeant Simeon, steer us back to the moon base for maintenance. Let's go, little guy. Captain, we're receiving a signal on the radio. It's an SOS. Same old stuff? Big deal. No, sir. It's a distress call. Oh, uh, put it on the speaker, Officer Jenny. Please help us. We are on the planet Cornea in the ocular galaxy. Please help us. Please. It just keeps repeating, Captain. What do we do? It's our duty as auditors to identify and assess the risks of material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, at the financial statement and assertion levels, thereby providing a basis for designing and implementing responses to the assessed risks of material misstatement. Also, it's our duty as astronauts to help someone in need. Follow that signal, Sergeant Simeon. Here we go again, Simeon. We're entering planet Cornea's gravitational field. Prepare for landing. Take us down, Sergeant Simeon. Let's go, little guy. You know, Captain, we sure are lucky that we have new risk assessment guidance. It'll help us get a better understanding of internal control and all this new modern IT. And that will help us determine the risks of material misstatement. We're almost to the planet's surface. Oh, careful there, little guy. Somehow I knew we shouldn't have let the monkey fly the ship. But then why else would we take a monkey into space, sir? Mechanic Melvin, you and Sergeant Simeon repair the ship while we investigate the emergency SOS here on planet Cornea. Aye, aye, sir. Get it? Aye, aye. <laughs> Looks like the signal is coming from that direction, Captain. I'll lead the way. Keep an eye out for danger. It seems a little risky, Captain. Yes, but it's all part of the job. Audit risk is a function of the risk of material misstatement and the detection risk. And the risk of material misstatement is made up of the entity's inherent and control risk. Very impressive, Officer Jenny. I see you've been reading the audit manual. Yes, sir. Look, there it is. It truly is a vision. Let's go. I spy a door, Captain. Let's see what happens. Wait a minute. Going in there could be a significant risk. I don't think so. You see, a significant risk exists where the assessment of inherent risk is close to the upper end of the spectrum of inherent risk. Oh, I see. So that would be due to the degree that the inherent risk factors affect the combination of a misstatement occurring and the magnitude. I knew you'd understand. Who is it? Oh, I. I mean, oh my. Um, I'm Captain Kyle, and this is Officer Jenny. We received a call for help. Thank goodness. Welcome to Planet Cornea. Please follow me. My name is Irene. Did you send the SOS? Yes. Our planet will be destroyed tonight by an incoming asteroid. Don't you mean asteroid? You see, our civilization lacks basic controls. We don't seem to have established a system to achieve the control objectives of our leaders. Captain, wouldn't proper policies help them? Why, of course. They would let the citizens of this planet know what should and should not be done. Would those policies need to be documented? Perhaps, but they could be stated explicitly in communication or perhaps even implied through actions and decisions. With these policies in place, you could then add procedures to implement these policies. You are both very good teachers. Why, thank you. And you're a very good pupil. Captain! <laughs> you 
You are here. My name is Iris. It took you longer than expected. My name is Ira. I'm Captain Kyle, but how did you know we were coming? We've had our eye on you. We need your help. Irene told us about the asteroid. Could we take them away on our spaceship? We cannot leave planet Cornea. We will die. Then we'll have to assess the risk and come up with a plan. We'll begin by looking at your system of internal control. You will find that we are an advanced civilization. Let me show you. We have a good control environment, a risk assessment process, a process to monitor the system, an information system and communication, and lastly, control activities. And you also have a very impressive computer. Pretty pictures. I think we can help. I have an idea. Captain! You know, Simeon, you're lucky you get to be a part of this team. I mean, you being all small and all. <laughs> you see, the captain understands the concept of scalability. <laughs> That's right, Simeon. Size might be an indicator of complexity, but some larger entities may be less complex, like little guys like you. Mechanic Melvin, this is Captain Kyle. Do you read me? Uh, no sir, but I can hear you. Close enough. Is the spaceship prepared? Yes sir, we're just tied in up. I need Sergeant Simeon to do a special maneuver with the spaceship. Put him on the radio. Put him on the radio? Whatever you say. On my count, take off and head due west to the giant volcano and drop in a barrel of fuel. Then get out of there as fast as you can. Do you copy? Keep your eyes peeled for danger. Good luck and Godspeed. What have you gotten us into now, Simeon? <laughs> Thank you, humans. You helped too. We couldn't have done it without your high IQ. Captain. Good job, crew. Let's head back to base. You know, Captain, it sure is nice to have all this great technology. Yes, without it, I shudder to think what have happened to those fine alien beings. But you must never forget the risks associated with information technology. Like what, Captain? Well, there could be ineffective design or operation. I see. Get it? I see. <laughs> That's right, Simeon. There could also be risks to the information integrity. <laughs> Captain, we're getting another distress call. Put it on the speaker. SOS, this is Moonbase Alpha. There is an asteroid heading straight toward Earth. Please help. What did you do this time, Simeon? 